Follow us to stay updated on debates, discussions, facts and tips about health. Click on the subscribe button and the bell icon for latest updates. My name is Sheila Krishnaswamy and I'm delighted to introduce to you two experts in the field of uh, psychology and yoga therapy. It's an honor for me to introduce Dr. R. Nagratna to all of you. She is the medical director at Arogya Dhamma at S. Vyasa University. She did her MBBS from Bangalore Medical College, MD in Internal Medicine from Mysore Medical College, MRCP and FRCP from Edinburgh, UK. She has over 80 publications to her credit in national and international journals and has 11 books on series of yoga for different ailments which have been published. We're really honored to have you here with us, Dr. Nagratna. It's Thank such a you. pleasure to see you online. Dr. Manisha Gaur is a clinical psychologist and counselor and is the director of Gaur Mental Health Clinic De Addiction and Heart to Heart Counseling Center in Rajasthan. A known name in psychology training programs and mental health awareness, she has recently directed a short film on dyslexia titled B for Dole. It's a pleasure to have you here, Manisha. Thank you for joining us in this program. Okay, my first question is to you, uh, Manisha. How did the pandemic affect the mental health of a person during the work from home scenario, if at all it happened? Uh, it certainly happens because recently, uh, ever since the pandemic has happened, I have been getting n number of people uh, because of the work stress who have been coming for the consultation. And that too, because of the work from home. The work from home scenario, basically uh, out of three reasons, when the person goes out, moves out, half of the stress decreases because when the person moves out of the place where the person is living day and night, the mindset, the mental set changes and new environment brings all that, all that change, which has not been happening these days. So first reason, because the home and the workplace is not segregated. So people who are working from home are not able to segregate the place, their workplace and the home place. That's the work pressure. The work pressure, which has been increasing because of the pandemic, because, you know, uh, if uh, we would have been going, those people who are working from home would have been going practically or in person to their offices, would have not attended back-to-back -back Zoom meetings, which has been happening these days. Almost uh, every day, almost there are ten, more than 10 meetings a day, which would have not been happening earlier when they were attending their offices. So that really strains the mental health, that affects the mental health and that stress increases, that, that work stress increases, then the pressure. And then they are also expected that So it's easy to work and work more. So what they used to work in the office, they are expected to work more at home because it's expected that the commute time is saved uh, so you can work from home, you can work a bit more, you're at home, you're at your leisure, you can work in your shorts wearing a shirt, so there's no issue. So all these things are also again increasing the work stress. And the third reason what I would want to say is that uh, when we are outside in a working environment, if there is a work stress, the people can talk to their fellow colleagues. At home that is not possible. You're working at home, uh, we are having the meeting, you're, you're online, you're talking to your clients or you're talking to your boss, but that is just one-to-one -one communication. You don't have people around. If there is stress or if they're really not happy with the communication which is happening, the conversation which has just happened with the boss or with the subordinate or with anybody else, they don't have anybody else to share it about or to take any kind of help, any kind of discussions they can make or any kind of solutions they can get from the fellow colleagues or the office people. So the, all these things have been increasing so much that they really feel that why home? It's the same way like children feel, Kab school khulenge? it's a similar kind of thing that when are we going, going to go back to our offices in a regular way? So these are prominently, I would say, things which are really affecting. And then whenever there is a meeting going on, either the kids would come running or the family members would come running. Anybody would peep in, and there are many memes and many videos which have been, which have gone viral during these uh, this pandemic time also, where the work is not at peace. 
so when the person is not able to focus at one thing at a time uh, the productivity decreases and when the productivity decreases the self expectation of the person of giving to the work that creates a lot of stress so that becomes the fourth reason for the things so these are primarily the four reasons that when we are not able to give our 100% we are when we are not getting the environment when we are not getting people to talk about when we are given when we have we are full of you know loaded with the work back to back meetings um and segregation of the home environment and the work environment that really has created a lot of problem in this pandemic working from uh, home dr narasimha how does the practice of asanas help in dealing with post pandemic office stress now that everybody is going back to office uh, in this context i will take you through some ppts which gives you the conceptual basis of how to how this is going to help us and uh, show you the conceptual basis as well as the uh, how yoga people look at the stress factor etc running through the whole thing welcome to this uh, presentation in which how to keep our immune system and respiratory system healthy to reduce stress is a very important thing very very important thing it is not only asana which is one of the physical activities but eat healthy foods maintain normal weight keep freedom from stress get plenty of sleep stay no to addictive substances are all the things which are very important in this post pandemic period our immune system is very very efficient security force when there is a germ that is coming from outside with bacteria viruses parasites etc which are foreign or it may be toxins or some chemicals our body has enormous capacity to differentiate dangerous substances from natural substances and we have very very good border security force called the white blood cells which keep a constant watch and send messages to the center recognize activate proper forces mobilize the right type of fighter cells attack and kill the abnormal cells and remember the whole thing life long and this immune system is the one which is most important which is there all over our body in all our passages including our respiratory passages and sinuses which are around the nose and nostril also carry large number of these fighter cells border security force and there is a very interesting research that has shown that these sinuses secrete a substance called nitric oxide which increases when we do brahmari pranayama and which is a very important antioxidant material so these antibodies and the chemical and the cell cellular fighters which are called natural killer cells are all controlled by our stress so in as early as april 2020 we published this paper in which we were able to show how stress disturbs immune functions how yoga can be useful in any communicable disease which has been published earlier and how meditation reduces severity in affected respiratory diseases what we need to understand is how stress can work has been worked out very very vividly in medical science when we think as dr manisha beautifully explained there are many of these challenging situation maybe change of work situation or home front financial problems loss of job or extra workload all these externally demanding situations are a big challenge and to that our mind reacts mind reacts with tension and that is the definition of stress when we define stress as tension it may be enormous 
fear also. This will be you releasing high level of electrical activities from the emotional cortex of our brain, which sends down electrical currents to our hypothalamus, which is our stress button. One big electrical stimulation to the hypothalamus stimulates our entire stress response system, which disturbs our immune system. As it happens in this situation, modern life itself was a large number of demanding situations. And in this post-COVID scenario, so many of these challenges, challenge, 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 stimulate, stimulate, stimulate. Entire neuroendocrine chemical system gets activated. And that is the one which creates all the problems of stress imbalance. And there's a big science called psychoneuroimmunology, which has clearly demonstrated how it works. What yoga makes us understand is this factor of how to handle this lifestyle during the post-COVID period by managing the mind. So the whole of the solution is to develop emotional stability, mind management. For this, the sages told us, please analyze for yourself when you are stressed. Situation, response, fear, lot of excitement, lot of stimulation. In that moment when I'm anxious or fearful, what exactly is happening in my mind? If I analyze the sentences in the mind, my God, kya hoga, kya hoga, kya hoga, kya hoga, kya hoga, kya hoga. Mind picks up enormous speed and starts rewinding at a very violent rate. And that is what we call as these stressful responses. And therefore, yoga tells us it is by definition, yoga is defined as MMM, mastery over the monkeying of the mind, mastery over the modifications of the mind through the technique of mana prashamana upahayaha, mind slowing down trick to reach a state of stability, samatvam. So definition of yoga is MMM, mind mastery through mind slowing down trick to reach samatva. This is a very, very important point, which is totally introspective one. Therefore, the first step in yoga is mindfulness. And therefore, when we turn inwards, recognize this uncontrolled violence of the mind, we get into that slowing down trick. So for that, we need a large number of restful practices. Deep rest to mind-body complex through deep relaxation technique, instant relaxation technique, quick relaxation technique, cyclic meditation, asanas are all the techniques. Dr. Sheila asked me, how do asanas help? Patanjali Rishi is very clear that when you do a physical posture also, how it helps in slowing down the mind. He defines asana very clearly as sthira sukham asanam. So when you stretch a part of the body, for example, and you bend, it's not the physical movement that is important, but the mind is very important. When you stretch the body, the keep the mind on the stretch apart, and focus your mind. Uh, since offices are reopening now and the world seems to be heading towards normalcy again, what do you think is going to affect the mental health the most? Is it going to uh, be because you know one is leaving one's home and going to uh, work or is it dealing with other office related stresses like you know commuting or the logging, uh, logging in on time or dealing with the office politics, colleagues, bosses, you know, there are so many things to deal with. You did say earlier that staying at home did cause a lot of stress, but 
do you think going back to office also is going to cause a lot of different kinds of stress yes you are right to talk about it to say about it initially i said that working from home was uh, quite stressful for people because they had to manage so many things but here vice versa uh, working going back to work is also being stressful for people so there was a study which can, uh, was which was conducted on about 1000 people and it was found out that 95% of the people were under stress that how would we go and work in the office because of the leisure they had had during their home uh, period during the period where they were working from home you know there was no time routine there was no schedule there was no waking up time no breakfast time everything was continuing everything was happening along with the office so if they have to go if they, their office started at uh, 10 or if, if we say at 9 they used to get up at 8:45 8:45 getting up just washing their faces putting on their shirts and right in front of the camera so because all that has been happening now it is being difficult for them that how are we going to do how are we going to maintain that schedule while we go back to the office because it has been too long years so anything which begins which gets into practice takes about 30 days if we are continuing to do the same work for 30 days will become a habit and it has been about 2 years so they have strengthened their habit and they have learned that habit now so now to rechange it to rewire the brain cells to get them back in the same shape what it was earlier while they used to go to office is being little difficult for them so this is one thing other thing because of uh, the so many work stress which i uh, talked about in the initial part of the question now because they have not been going office since so many uh, during this pandemic they were working and handling all the stress all alone at home so uh, some of the work stress office stress cannot be shared even with the family because family cannot exactly understand how the things are going so they have been handling it all alone and we to handle it to relax themselves what they started with having lot of caffeine lot of tea you know excess of tea eight cups 10 cups of tea or more than that 15 cups of coffee or tea so commute of course uh, everybody knows in all the metropolitan cities commute is a big problem and the pollution uh, noise pollution is a big stressor if those pumps are happening those horns are blowing continuously if there is lot of tra- traffic if somebody is running short of time the time management is not there it again is a big big stress for the office goers because once you are running late of time you are running late of everything you have to run after the time if you catch if you are early waker if you are early risers and if you are doing everything in time then you don't have to run after time but those now who are in practice of just waking up at the nick of the time is very it is very difficult for them to catch the time so it is a big big stressor thank you for that it seems to be quite a long list so work from home or not work from home and work from office both seem to be stressing people out but i guess you know well, there are ways and means to handle such uh, stressful situations but there are are there any signs uh, manisha to Uh, to tell us that a person is undergoing stress and if there are then what are they uh, if somebody is undergoing stress a body gives lot many signs you know uh, anxiety everybody every problem if it is stress or if, if any other kind of problem if any other kind of psychiatric or psychological problem anxiety is always there it's a it's a, a primary factor which can be ruled out so that anxiety symptoms body gives us those symptoms you know if somebody is getting irritated the palpitation starts if somebody is you know there's a voice modulation um, sweating hands hands starts sweating then they they feel that there's weakness in their body fatigue effect uh they don't have the strength and stamina to stand they would feel like they are going to fall down so these are or there there are some butterflies in the stomach or uneasy breathlessness these are symptoms which are generally the what somatic somatic symptoms the bodily symptoms which are seen what a behavioral observation which can be done uh, if the fellow colleague is suffering or somebody else is suffering is basically the personality of the person what kind of a person what kind of a personality the person has had always and is there some change in the personality for example if a chirpy person uh, suddenly becomes calm and quiet 
So that is a change in personality, which uh, is not normal. If somebody who is very talkative suddenly becomes quiet, is something to be noticed on. Right? If somebody is oversleeping, if somebody is sleeping less, if somebody is binge eating or eating less, or some people out of anxiety speak more. So if the change in the basic personality is seen, the behavior is overtly uh, observed, uh, can be noticed that yes, there are there is some problem. Oh, that's that's an interesting uh, list of uh, you know uh, behavioral changes that you have uh, shared. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Nagarjuna. Do you have any particular yoga asanas that you would suggest in order to handle stress? I mean, you you beautifully said that you know a, a, everything has to be both a combination of physical and putting the mind to every asana uh, in order to divert the mind, uh, divert the attention towards the you know the asana, but any particular asana that you would suggest for people who are stressed that they should practice on a day to day basis it's very important that we work on this and during the pandemic we have been able to evolve many set of asanas and we produced series of practices which will be very useful even during the pandemic during the sickness and recovery phase this is a very, very simple set of practices that we evolved, which can be learned instantaneously without even a teacher. So we have had some chair practices, hand stretch breathing, hands in and out breathing, simple body movements like bending forward, backward, and a few asanas followed by pranayama. We have evolved many such practices. The whole of the concept is do not overstretch, do whatever movements you can do, with, combined with deep internal awareness, combined body movements combined with breathing, slow down the breathing, exhalation longer than inhalation, synchronization of body movements with breathing, and deep internal awareness. So we have preparatory moments followed by a few asanas in the sitting posture, standing posture, and prone posture and supine posture. Total of one hour practice can be recommended, which includes five minutes of breathing, five minutes of loosening, 20 minutes of physical postures, followed by 15 minutes of pranayama and five minutes of meditation. This is a module which is going to help them to work at the body level, breathing level, mind level, emotions level, intellectual level, all to help them to calm down the mind and switch off the mind of all the unwanted thoughts. It's very interesting that you're show, showing asanas on chairs. So is this useful for people who are in the offices or is it meant for a certain sect of people who cannot sit down or stand up and bend forward and do asanas like that or whom do you advise this for because i see very interesting poses uh, using a chair on, on the screen yeah this we call as chair surya namaskara which can be practiced as a for those who have difficulty in doing surya namaskara in the usual way but if they have to do some practices in the office we don't have to do all the 12 steps let them do just one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Again, combining it with breathing, closed eyes, awareness, internal mindfulness, forget everything around, even the screen in front, friends around, the colleagues around, boss and talk, everything you forget just for three minutes. One minute to breathe in, breathe out three times with the closed eyes, thinking of your divine tuning. Then breathe in, go up, breathe out, come down. Breathe in, go up, breathe in, come down. As slow as you can. Breathe in, go up, breathe out, come down. This can be done five rounds. Then come back, 
and go back to your namaskar mudra and say oh, mentally think of your tune tune state to that divine pavitra bhava and tell yourself i am totally switched off my mind is very very peaceful and calm 3 minutes several times in the day is going to make all the difference that's so, so beautifully put and i'm sure a lot of people will benefit from the chair uh, you know asanas because i'm sure not not many people are aware of this and it's really going to be very very useful so thank you so much for enlightening uh, the viewers on chair uh, yoga asana and chair surya namaskar as uh, dr nagatna has beautifully you know told us that yoga the asanas the meditation the pranayama all of that helps in managing stress is very well uh, what are your suggestions on how to handle a stressful situation you know we have already talked about the yoga no ma'am has already talked spoken about yoga that how can uh, yoga help us out but other than yoga i would really talk about the circadian rhythm of the body if we really want to keep ourselves comfortable we need to follow the circadian rhythm of the body that is our waking up time and the sleeping time so whatever time we sleep even if we get late at time at, uh, at times you know if your if your routine time of sleeping is like 11 uh so and sometimes you get late you get 12 or you get to sleep at 1 do not uh shift your waking up time if you wake up at 6 or 7 in the morning it should remain same every day uh whatever time you sleep at night so if you have that proper waking up time uh, you will have a proper day a proper time management a proper routine and if you have a proper routine the stress lowers down and you get to fall asleep early uh, the next day otherwise the sleep get disturbed and if the sleep get disturbed the other day mind doesn't work so well it doesn't get fresh uh, at all the reason behind it is the night sleep the initial 2 hours sleep which we call about 10 to 12 uh, the time between 10 to 12 that 2 hours sleep is very important for the brain for all the wear and tear of the brain you know all that rewiring happens it relaxes comfortably it doesn't mean that you sleep at 10 and wake up at 12 again having the, those two hours sleep but that is the most important sleep and after that the in the sleep till 5 so initially or every day a person should sleep for about 7 hours the proper time management will happen and the night sleep cannot be compensated by the day sleep if you think that you will sleep an hour or two hour in a day time it will not compensate the night sleep so for a healthy brain it is very important to have a good sleep to maintain that circadian rhythm to wake up in time to have proper exercises and of course proper breaks during the work time especially even if you're working from home it is important to take short breaks say like our attention span is about for 45 minutes so we cannot focus on anything for more than 45 minutes so it is it would it is uh, advisable to take a break for about 2 minutes a very short break you know you can just wash your face look at something green green really uh, improves the memory also which will again help and some stretching exercises which increases the blood flow and which again relaxes the body and reenergizes it so if all these things that happen and of course you can very well talk about the diet plus <laughs> yourself <laughs> you know the importance of diet so all these things together are really going to work well to uh, help out with the stress okay thank you and i'm so glad to hear that both dr mazatma and manisha both of you have talked about the circadian rhythm the importance of sleep and the importance of managing stress through lifestyle you know like things like diet and exercise and all of that uh, so it, you know th- there's a lot of things resonating commonly here and thank you for that uh, dr mazatma one last question to you what is the best time duration and frequency to practice yoga for an office goer if you have ideally if you can spare your morning one hour before you get off with your day to day activities for which as dr gaur said waking up at 8:30 will not be possible yes. so they will have to go to bed a little earlier and get up one hour earlier and that will be ideal what has become very popular is going for morning walk morning walk is very popular today 
then you go for your morning walk, cut down the duration of walk to 50%, 20 minutes brisk walk, or maybe a little fast jogging, walking, jogging, walking, until you feel a little short of breath, and then come back after 20 minutes, lie down on your mat, do some deep abdominal breathing in the form of a um, shavasana, and then do three Surya Namaskaras. If your knee is hurting, do it on chair Surya Namaskara. Otherwise, three Surya Namaskara will take you only five to seven minutes. Following that, do three physical postures. One day standing, three postures. One day sitting, three postures. One day prone, three postures. And then end with a quick relaxation technique. And then go on to spend 10 minutes for breathing, five minutes for my own meditation, if you can spare one hour. I know many people will get scared. I said, no, 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 I have no one hour time. For them, a tip is 10 minutes, four times a day. 10 minutes of three Surya Namaskaras followed by relaxation. Another 10 minutes, only pranayama. Whatever pranayama you already know, pranayama is simply slow breathing, deep inhalation, deep exhalation. Nowadays, anuloma viloma pranayama is very popular, which is also called as Nadi Shuddhi pranayama. Then another session with chanting. Uh, resonance all over the body, 10 minutes. So before breakfast, 10 minutes, before lunch, 10 minutes, before dinner, 10 minutes, before going to bed, 10 minutes, which will give you very good sleep and that will take away all the stress. Oh, that's wonderful. You made it very flexible for you know those who cannot find one hour in the morning. Do you think employees are very unsure about what is in store for them next? You yes. know, especially because of the pandemic. You know, before pandemic, I think all of us were very confident of ourselves. We knew what the future held for us. We kind of, we thought at least. We so, thought we knew the future. We thought we knew everything and we had everything in our control. But today, a lot of people don't feel that they have that control over life anymore. Yes. Because yes. everybody is, you know, Everything right. is so uncertain. Life is so uncertain. Right. So, so do you I, think that is causing stress? Yeah, that is certainly causing stress because during this these uh, two years, the pandemic years, which have been very difficult, uh, maximum of the people, you know, employees, if we talk about their personal losses or the office, I mean, even if they're losing their jobs, that's a personal loss. And that is affecting the entire family. That is disturbing the family uh, peace, losing the job or losing the loved ones because of the pandemic. Uh, which again hampers their work efficiency. All right. Like recently, yes, uh, today morning only, I met a boy. He's an, uh, ad I, I won't name him. He's an advocate. He's a young uh, boy. And I, I would say a young man who's doing very well. But he lost his mother. And now he's not able to focus well. He works in Mumbai. And uh, he is not able to focus well not able to focus well. So this is hampering his work. This is hampering his job because he lost his mother. He says, I was completely dependent on her and I'm not able to focus on anything. Now, whatever comes in my life, whom should I talk to? Whom should I share with? So uh, this is one thing. So many of many of them are coming. Somebody's losing their, somebody, all, all the loved, loved ones. Then uh, what I talked about, the jobs, losing their jobs. So because of this pandemic, that uncertainty of what next is going to happen in the life, has really disturbed them because of which they are not able to focus because of which the efficiency of work just not office work their everyday efficiency is decreasing their efficiency of managing their routine life their efficiency of managing their uh, family the, their efficiency of communicating well with people around everything overall is decreasing they are not able to do that so pandemic is certainly uh, made everybody very uncertain. Uh, so now if we find out that this is what has been happening, I, I think this is what the second uh, year part was, that if this is what is happening, that what should be done. So uh, if 
we see people around like this and if this is happening every time it is important to retrain uh, you know uh, we have caution conscious and subconscious uh, in our brain you know brain is again part of like uh, conscious subconscious and the unconscious thing so whatever we are feeding consciously to the uh, whatever we are seeing a uh, sensory parts organs which are taking in it's the conscious thing and which is going in the subconscious and whatever goes in the subconscious brain things it is important to think about so it is important for us that what are we carrying to the subconscious because while we are asleep the brain is awake just as the heart is awake the heart is pumping similarly the brain is also working and whatever we are taking during the uh, day time and tired time whatever we are thinking at night it's all being processed and when we wake up we wake up with those stronger thoughts now it is on us whether we are taking in the negative thoughts if we are taking in the fears the you know all that griefs inside so now the thing is that we need to work on it and working on it it becomes very important to change ourselves to what our i generally be, uh, tell people when they come to me that whatever your heart says while you're upset while you're sad your heart would always say go oh, sit alone do not talk to anyone you know you'll prefer isolation so just do opposite to that do not sit alone uh, if your heart says don't talk don't receive the call do receive the call and for that it is important that you just give 5 seconds to your brain because your brain would take to think you know if there is something coming on it won't be spontaneous at the time of stress your brain takes time to think so just give those 5 seconds 5 4 3 2 1 that means you're not giving time to your brain and you have to work spontaneously to whatever you're doing and that spontaneity will again help you to come out of your stresses doing the work immediately Yeah, that's interesting. Especially the five, three, uh, you know, five, four, three, two, one. I think is a very interesting concept. Yes. yes. Uh, thank you for sharing that. But do you think the companies, you know, the uh, the employers and the management of companies can do something to help people cope with stress, like maybe stress management programs, group therapy? Yes. 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 Like that. Yes, that is very important. The companies should mentally uh, start with you know stress management programs. Then of course every company must have a counselor, because anybody who is stressed, the most important thing for that person is that he needs some ears to be heard about. You know, if he gets those ears, he can relax or she can relax himself or herself uh, out of that stress. No, that person can get herself or himself out of that stress. So a counselor should be there. Then those stress management uh, workshops must be there compulsorily for all the students. So thank you so much for the wonderful insights you have given us, uh, Dr. Nagratna. It it was really a pleasure interacting with you, and uh, thank you so much for your time and thank you for being here with us. Thank you. I thank wish you. everyone in the office will start practicing yoga. in their office i know of one company where they switch off their system for 2 minutes every 2 hours and everybody has to chant deep relaxation and get on with their work so this is been introduced in a office a software company in america so it's not at all impossible if we make up our mind that all that we need to do is switch on the mind switch off the mind switch on with full focusing take a deep breath say om and keep your mind quiet several times in the day thank you all i wish thank you so much thank you thank you, thank you so much